welcome to the ICSB webinar, The Entrepreneurial Journey of Hazel Farm. My name is Winslow Sargent. I am the chair of ICSB on behalf of the members of ICSB, uh, the board of directors. Um, I'm so happy and so pleased to have the opportunity today uh, to speak with with entrepreneur Iman Mustafa Kamal. So I bring you greetings. Um, I know that there are many of you who are in, in different time zones and really appreciate the fact that you've taken time out of your schedule to be with us. And I just want to assure you that you will not be disappointed because um, I, I firsthand got a chance to um, visit with Hazel Farm and was very impressed. And so I, I, I won't take away all of the thunder, but um, uh, but you will learn a lot about the journey and you'll be thoroughly impressed. And in terms of housekeeping rules, I just want you to, um, that if you have any questions that you might have during, during the presentation, because we'll leave uh, some time to the end for Q&A, please add your questions to the Q&A or, or in the chat box, just so that you will remember. But before much ado, and before we start um, answering questions, I just like, I, again, I just want to thank everyone for coming out. And I want to, um, I, I want to give as much time as possible to really hear from the star of this webinar, to hear from Iman. <laughs> and um, I met her, just to give some background, I met her um, almost three years ago when I was in Aswan. I was at an ICSB um, com conference, the, in, the Egypt uh, on, Entrepreneur Summit in Aswan, and I got a chance to meet and talk with her, was very impressed with what she was doing. And at the time, she she talked about a farm, but I didn't really know what that farm was until a couple of years later, uh, me and my sister, when we were in Egypt, we got a chance to visit um, her at her farm and, um, and got the full tour and uh, ate some figs and really I had a really good time, and so um, and so I thought that it made sense just for her to share her her story, share her her journey, because we can all benefit from both the good and the ups and downs. Because she will share with you her her story. But before but before I um, start, once again, I just want to thank you for coming out, and I'm going to um, you know when when we think about. About, on, about entrepreneurship, you know, what comes to mind are the sustainable development goals. And so we have been really focused on the SDGs, the 17 goals. And when I think about the entrepreneurial journey, you know, there are many goals that, uh, that Hazel Farm has touched on, right? When you think of the SDG number one, dealing with no, no poverty, right? You're dealing you're empowering people to take matters into their own hands in terms of being being an entrepreneur and and working. When I think of of SDG number two in terms of of zero hunger, we're focusing on how to make sure to feed people. When I think of SDG number three, the good health and well-being, how to make sure that what you're eating is good for you because there are many things that we eat that are not good for you. When I think of SDG number five in terms of gender equality, that you can be an entrepreneur. It doesn't matter what your background is, what your gender is. It, it's a lot of work. It's, it's not easy, but, it's, but it is a possibility. When I think of SDG number six in terms of clean water and sanitation, once again, it's important that we find a way to make the best use of this planet and and and, and make sure that we're not um, that that we put good things in, in our body but we don't ruin the environment when i think of S sdg number 8 in terms of decent work and, and economic activity um, we sometimes think that technology is the only way that you can start a business but we all need to eat food we all need to eat we eat every day multiple times a day. And so that's why it's important that we find a way to uh, make sure that we are good 
stewards of 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 um, of of the way that we eat. When I think of SDG number eleven, sustainability, we need to make sure that we can do things that are sustainable. And and of course, SDG number fifteen, life on land. We need to once again make use of this life on land. And so there are many things that we're going to touch on, but um, I want to pass. Um, I wanted to pass the baton to Iman to to hear from you and to hear your story, because um, I think that we all can benefit in terms of what is the entrepreneurial journey. And so, well, welcome to this webinar, Iman. Thank you so much for this great introduction. Uh, I feel very flattered and honored to be here and. Uh, Thank you and thank you to ICSB for all the support. It was a pleasure having you at the farm uh, with your sister. Uh, so um, a brief introduction about myself is uh, I am 34 years old. I used to work as an employee uh, for eight years in international organizations, namely ILO and GIZ, uh, in, in projects uh, that are related uh, to um, Youth employment and education. Um, and then I, I decided to pursue my master's in sustainable development. And since then, I knew that I have a passion in uh, sustainability and I, want, and I wanted to make an impact in a related field, but I didn't know exactly what would it be. Uh, and then um, I decided to uh, quit uh, my full-time job in 2020 and can we go to the next slide the one before yes okay and then uh, so my main motive to do this change was i really had a desire to try something new uh, i also thought that this was a suitable time for me if i want to try something so this is the time and it might not come uh, again because I already uh, have uh, had experience in uh, in international organizations, I worked with different managers. Uh, I, I I I didn't have personal commitments at that time, so I wanted I had a free time to 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 invest uh, in learning uh, new uh, things, um, and I also wanted to support my family to optimize the farm's operations. So. First, I scanned what the resources that we have. So when I found that there is a farm or there is a land that we don't use, or that it's, it's always something on the side, uh, everyone in the family has the, his own job. Uh, so I thought that this is something that is related to what I want, but, I, I, but I'm still not sure that this is the thing. Um, and then I quit my job and I focused on learning organic farming from scratch. So the journey of uh, learning organic farming was uh, was very uh, can we go to the next slide was very uh, tough and uh, challenging and it was full of uh, disappointments. Uh, so it it started by by trying uh, some um, uh, models in the farm and they failed, and then I started to go to other farms and try to take uh, some insights from them and to know what they do. Uh, in terms of organic farming. And then I realized that uh, organic farming needs a lot of time and uh, patience and uh, money, and it's not something easy, uh, and it will not bring uh, rewards uh, on the spot. It needs a lot of time. So I started to think of uh, another revenue stream. Uh, the ideation process um, happened when I tried to, I tried to find what, what, I, what do I love what is something that I know is that is a strength in my personality? So I found that, and everyone, I, it was a psychological exercise, and I found that I love hosting people, I love uh, uh, gatherings, uh, I know how to pamper people. So I thought that bringing in the people element in the equation would be uh, something good. And since then, I started to work really passionately in this uh, model, and then I came up with a, a new concept which is the agri-payment. 
uh, and I tested it before uh, launching through a research and I got a validation that is something uh, very needed and uh, there is a, dem a demand uh, for it in the market. Can go to the next slide? So agritainment is uh, combining farming with entertainment through hands-on activities. So Hazel Farm now aims at raising awareness about the importance of, of organic food, clean eating, and being in touch with nature, and taking care of the environment through involving the guests into the farm process. The process includes planting, harvesting, uh, pick your own food, uh, farm table food experience, uh, in addition to seasonal festivals. So for example, when we have uh, the, the mango harvest, so we do festival mango festival, when we have the apricot uh, season, we do uh, apricot the party and, and so on. So it's all fun activities, but it aims to teaching people new things and to make them love again the food or, or, or appreciate, I mean, the, the, the food that has, uh, that is high quality. Okay, can we go to the next slide? So, so this was the idea and this is what I wanted to achieve. So um, I, I wanted to, uh, let's go back again, I, yes. Um, so it was an empty land. I, I asked my, uh, my family and my brother thankfully told me that there is a plot of land that we will not use anytime soon. And it was a complete desert. So I started to work on a design for this, of the, uh, of the, for this idea. And I asked my, my friend who is an engineer to design the project and we, we developed an implementation plan and we worked on it. So it's basically a land that is full of uh, different crops that are all grown organically. And there is a building in, in the middle of this land with a shaded area that works as a restaurant and a gathering space. Um, and this was the pictures before starting. Then, the next slide. So these are the pictures now. The pictures before starting was in 2021. Uh, so in one year, but with, re with really full 100% uh, work only on this project and commitment and discipline, uh, it happened to be uh, this uh, transformation in one year. And so now our clients are, we have different target, group, target groups. We have school trips and uh, they are all based on edu edutainment and educational uh, programs, uh, but, but all uh, um, related to hands-on activities. Uh, so they get, they get to plan, they get to touch the, the food. Uh, they, they even, uh, some kids, they don't like many vegetables or they don't like specific types of vegetables, but when they get to touch the, 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 the food and eat it, they, they get to love it again. We also host corporate retreats and team buildings and sometimes meetings. And we also uh, have, uh, we open the farm for normal public visits for any individual, including yoga and meditation groups or families and friends. And, the, and these corporates are some of, the, some of our clients. Some of them are international organizations, embassies, uh, multinational and banks. So uh, going back to what I said that uh, my passion was always to, to make an impact on sustainability. So now I, I am happy that Hidel Farm is achieving this because uh, for me, sustainability have, uh, has three main pillars, the economic and social and environmental. So for the economic impact, Hidel Farm creates jobs in both the farming and hospitality sectors where the locals get the chance to improve their income level to acquiring new skills, uh, whether in the uh, clean agriculture practices or other skills related to hospitality and facilitating uh, trips. For the social impact, uh, the agritainment uh, concept um, raises public awareness about the importance of organic food and clean eating and being in touch with nature through fun games and through entertainment, not through just uh, talking or lectures. And the environmental impact um, is uh, we, uh, we adopt an approach in agriculture it's called agroforestry. And uh, this approach means that we um, grow different crops in the same exact plot. 
So we grow uh, vegetables with herbs, with uh, with fruits, with seeds, and uh, this system uh, improves the soil quality and rebuilds uh, the ecosystem. And it helps the, the the organic farmer to remain organic because uh, by having uh, this complete ecosystem with different insects, it's um, it in the, you 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 decrease the the possibility the pos the possibility to to get any pests. So the challenges and which is the most important part of the story, I uh, I classified them into three main categories. So the technical challenges, which are related to the sector itself and to the agriculture uh, field. So switching the farmer from organic to uh, sorry from conventional farmer to organic farm is quite challenging. It really requires a lot of time. And it's much easier to uh, start from scratch than switching a farm uh, from from conventional to organic. The resistance to change I found um, with the farmers and with the people who are experts in this field was also challenging. Also finding a mentor to uh, to guide me in a sector that I didn't have any experience in uh, before. Um, and the turnover of workers, which is I think is a challenge that happens across uh, the sector in Egypt uh, and the climate change, which is uh, going with a very fast pace uh, that uh, we have to uh, to be uh, adaptive to it, but we even can't go. Um, the psychological challenges, which is which are for me the, the most uh, difficult ones. And and these challenges um, I face uh, mostly um, in the first year before starting, before launching. So the answer, the uncertainty of starting something new and with many questions, with doubts, uh, without any clues of uh, whether this will work or this is something only in my mind. Uh, so uh, having this all, always in my mind before starting and before finding any words was not easy. The failed attempts that happened before uh, starting, when I start, when I try to, to grow some organic plants and they didn't do well at all and I lost money and I lost time and effort but uh, but actually these failed attempts were the push for me to start out to start thinking out of the box and start to think of agritainment and to to think of the model to go beyond farming and to integrate also the people in it and uh, another challenge is uh, the tiredness of always having to make a decision and big decisions by my own and no one is sharing the responsibility uh, and because i didn't have any experience in this field uh, so i had to learn to put my ego aside and try not to get affected at all by the comments of the people uh, and the experts in this the experts in this field and even the bullying of the people uh, of uh, who were looking at me as a spoiled girl who are who is coming to play and she, she doesn't know what she wants and so on. And um, but but these challenges, the psychological ones, I I know that I overcame them. They are still there, but I I got used to them and I know I don't see them as big as before. Uh, the challenges that I'm remain now as an entrepreneur is the workload. Uh, there is no uh, the, the the schedule the daily schedule is not very organized. There is always uh, it's now the life uh, my life is about the business and some things in between. Not the 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 job is that is all the life. Uh, and also it's challenging to find a team that shares the same vision. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, um, really, thank you for that um, presentation. I mean, there's so much in 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 what you said, and um, and I I really wanted to, and, and we're going to touch on on many parts, but um, but I want you to take to take a breath because I know you you have come from the farm, so even before this webinar, this is not a day off. This is a day on where you have to work. You, you had to work today, but um, what I think that I 
we'll start out with the question: How were you able to pivot? You know, you you went, you you went to went to university. You worked for an organization. You didn't go to have your hands dirty or work with soil, but yet you were able to pivot. And what what was the point that you said, "Hey, this is not for me to work for this or this organization." I have to follow my passion. And what was the tipping point that you finally said, this is it, I'm gonna try? Okay, so the the turning point? Yes. Uh, the turning point was uh, that I felt that I can, I can do, maybe I can do better in something else, this question. That when, when I was working as an employee, I was asking myself, what if I can do better in something else, but I didn't try it, so I, I, I will not know. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, my family was very supportive and they encouraged me to try working on the farm because we didn't want to sell the farm mm -hmm. and it was not doing well. And, it, and I was... Uh, my personal uh, circumstances at, the, at this specific point uh, were, were allowing me to, to, to take a break from, uh, from, uh, from, from working as an employee. So I want to also to say something that uh, starting an, an, as an entrepreneur, you have to be open to the idea that you will not get money easily and you will have to sacrifice with the financial stability. I didn't have the luxury to take this risk before, but at this time, it's specifically this time, I, I could have done, I could have done it. So I appreciated the timing that this time may not come again. So this, that's why I, uh, I, I thought of, let's, if I want to do something, now is a suitable time. Then what, what would be the, the thing? I was not very passionate in agriculture, but I, wa I, I thought that it's something that is close to what to my passion, but I'm not sure if it, this is it or not. Then when I tried, when I tried working on it, um, it, it was okay. I, I love the idea of, of, of having uh, clean food and to grow my own food. I, I, I really wanted to do this. But then when I thought of integrating people into the equation, this was this, this was it. Uh, I wanted to do this, I wanted to, uh, to gather people, I I enjoy this idea, and with the first event, I knew that this is what I want to do. Wow, well, well, and the reason why I ask is that there's so many of us who want to do something, but we're afraid to take the first step, or or we or we talk about it for months or years. How long did you? How long did it take for you to, from when you said I'm not happy? working in this organization and I can do more to when you mm -hmm. said and you reached out to family and says hey is there anything that I can do H how long was that time was was that was that a couple of years what was was that a month how long did it take yes it was a couple of years exactly but it was yeah it was always something that I will do but not now yes mm, okay. then in 2020 I felt that this is the time for it Okay. Okay. But it got, so you got to a point and then of course you have family, you have loved ones, and now you have this land that's not being used. Now this is not, is not being used. So what must you be thinking in terms of the fertilizers? I mean, there's so much that goes into farming. How, how did you, um, how, what was the first thing that you did to, to start? Uh, the first thing is that I started to observe um, what happens in the farm. The farm, some uh, some parts uh, parts of it are already were already planted, uh, but but the the plot of land that I I, I, I built on it hazel is something else. But it's part of the farm. Mm. So I started to 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 see what the farmers do with the with the crops that are ongoing. And I uh, started to uh, outreach some uh, uh, agriculture experts to um, optimize the operations. And uh, many of them were very misleading for me. 
and uh, they were disappointed. Um, and then uh, I I got to, I got a big down, and I reconsidered going back to my work. It was like after six uh, months of quitting, and then I decided to go and uh, to go to other farms and do like field visits to other farms that are organic and learn from them. And then I volunteered in Tekum. It's one of the top uh, farms in Egypt, in the, the leading com uh, farm in organic agriculture. And uh, I volunteered there for like uh, four or five months. One day a week, I go there and I work as a farmer. So it was very, very insightful. And it was for me the starting point. Then I went back again to the farm and I planted a, a land, uh, a small uh, plot of land, uh, all by myself. I, no one helped me at all. I just wanted to learn. And for me, it was like a course, a practical course to, to learn. Uh, and it was a very, uh, it, it was a big loss, but it was, a, uh, I learned a lot, a lot. And then after this uh, experiment, I decided that agriculture and farming is not enough. For me, I want to have people in it. Okay, good, good. I'm, I'm so fascinated because so often when you do something new, you have family and friends who love you who, who will say, maybe you shouldn't do it. Why don't you stick to something that you know? But yet you still continued on, but also you sought out some resources. You went and you saw, you volunteered. Um, and so you put in the time because this was a commitment that you've made. And so when you look back at some of the things that um, were most pivotal to making you, to help helping you to continue, what were some of the, what were the motivations? What was it, a, what, was it friends? Was it family members? Was it the network who says you can do it? Because it always takes someone there to say, you can do it. I may not be able to know farming, but I am here to work with you in some capacity. Yes, of course, uh, family and friends uh, are very important in this thing. And uh, they were a great support system. Uh, even, if they, um, even if they were not sure about the results, but they were always encouraging. They were thinking that I'm, I'm doing hard work. And uh, this hard work will pay off, but no one <laughs> knew how it will pay off because uh, nothing was clear. But uh, but I at that time I thought a lot. I left my job, so I'm stuck in this. I have to 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 see what what could it be. You know, I I have to see the end. Yeah. Now, d d did your coworkers, when you told them that you're leaving your job and to become a farmer to work and farm? What was their reaction? Did did they think that you were crazy? Did did they support you? What was what was the reaction? Yeah, some of them uh, thought that this was not a, a good decision, of course, and some of them they were supportive, and some also thought try it but don't leave the work. Why you want to leave the work and try this? But I knew that if I want to make something, I have to be dedicated to it um but, uh, but at the end uh, yeah, and things went uh, well in terms of the, the my network they were most of them were supportive hmm. okay the, uh, the, the, the talent i found was from the people in the field the farmers the, the workers the, the consultants uh these people they were very um, challenging and they made me doubt myself a lot hmm. Do you find many, in terms of mentors, are, are there a lot of women who are doing farming? And because it seems like it's mostly a male do, um, dominated field. And so how, how were you able to, um, how were you able to navigate these challenges? The mentor, to find the mentors was not easy because it, it, for me, it, 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 it has always been easy to find the mentor in my previous job. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, Amel Moifi, many of you know her, uh, she's, she's always been my mentor, but in general, in, in, in the career, in how to, to grow in a job and so on. But in agriculture specifically, 
um, you, you get to choose uh, what to take from each one. It's not mm. easy to find a mentor who can, who can teach you everything. Um, but, but for me, taken, being in taken, the, the, the farm where I volunteered, uh, was a great uh, mentoring uh, program for me. And from there, I found someone. He's a, he's a, he's a man. Uh, he was the, the farm manager. And I was shadowing him. And uh, it happened that when I started his farm, he left Tikkim and he joined me. Oh, he so, joined you. So he, oh. yes. So mm. he, he, so it's also a great support uh, uh, for mm. me. I and mean, he, le he learned, he taught me a lot mm. in, 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 in the technicalities of farming. Mm. And in terms of a budget, because many times when you want to, st now, did you save up before you started the farm and how, how what type of funding are, are they access to funding for those who, want to start a farm, what were some of the ways that you helped to start your farm? Okay, so first, year, uh, just before launching, of course, it was only spending money. Mm -hmm. It was from my savings and uh, from my parents, mm. from my family only. Yes. Uh, I, I, yeah, taking uh, uh, micro lo uh, loans and so on are left to be the last last option okay okay i know that uh, that this is something that the entrepreneurial ecosystem trying to promote but uh, still psychologically i'm mm -hmm. i'm not very comfortable to do it yeah How, and and being an entrepreneur and being a farmer that means that you have to um you're subject to the environment right you're you're subject to the rain and the sun and the mm -hmm. wind how it much different than being in an office where you have more control. How was that different to to help you start your venture? It's very uh, uh, the the time in agriculture is very very critical. So if you, for example, uh, start uh, postponed the planting time for a week, this might affect the whole season. Mm. So the timing and of, and when and for example the extreme the extremely hot days in the summer that were not there before and the extremely cold days uh, of winter in Egypt that sometimes it's below zero degrees and which has never happened before there are always uh, uh, big challenges for the farmers but they mm -hmm. get to be very flexible this is what uh, I think uh, the best uh, or the high skills uh, uh, of the of a farmer is to be flexible and to be adaptive and to have this problem solving to always think of what to do for the plant to save it hmm. so have to be ready for any changes that can happen how, and because how? of this up and down because mm -hmm. of this extremely uh, uh, up and down i thought that i don't want to depend 100 percent on agriculture to be my business I want to, to be very uh, flexible with the, with the crops and to be comfortable in dealing with them and to focus on making them very high quality without any pressure that they should uh, bring me money. No, they should be very uh, healthy at first and then they, they can be rewarding anytime. On the other hand, I should work on another revenue stream which will not be affected by this seasonality at all. So that's why I... I thought that agritainment would, would, would make this. And, and let's get into to agritainment because I love the word. You created a new word in terms of marrying the whole nature of agriculture with, with entertainment. And you have involved not only the organizations for retreats, but you involve, involve the whole family. So a whole families can enjoy and learn about about agriculture, about nature, about their environment, and really have fun. So just tell us more about how you came to focus on that ecosystem, to not just to focus on the farming itself, but 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 how we connect to the farm and, and the ecosystem. Um, I thought that uh, connecting to, to the farms are something that in our intuition, it's not something that some people love and others don't i believe that everyone loves it but they just uh, didn't get that chance to experience it 
and uh, before starting, uh, I, uh, I I had like a survey with many uh, people. I give it to many people in different networks. And I got validated that uh, people really are uh, craving this uh, type of outing. And uh, uh, also after the COVID, people want more and are seeking for uh, outdoor outing. So when you try to, to offer them an outdoor outing and try to mix it with something that they will learn and uh, where their kids uh, will, will benefit from it and will, will eat better and they will uh, also get the chance to eat uh, the food that they, they have just picked. So this experience, I, I, I didn't have a doubt that it will be appealing for, for everyone. Uh, so I started um, uh, by uh, the marketing of it was mainly on social media, and uh, I I relied on my network, and then the word of mouth worked very well. Yes, well I can um, I can attest that I never picked figs before and ate figs and they were fresh, and the thing that I I was amazed is that you have a system set up for families and so that kids can go and see farms and see and see vegetables and um, and have a time where you eat these fresh fresh fruits and fresh products and then there's um you know there's a meal and um, and so it it is great and and I I can see how those who may have grown up in the cities and who may not have an who may not have access to farms can benefit from going to Hazel Farm. And so if, if someone wanted to volunteer and to learn more about your farms, especially someone in high school or in, in secondary school, how have you integrated what you do with, with those who may want to volunteer or help? Uh, we are planning to, to start a volunteering program, to announce a volunteering program for students and to make it something like a course and uh, they they come to volunteer and learn and graduate and then they can work uh, at the farm or they can come for free we are planning to do uh, something like this we are still preparing for the details uh, but uh, hopefully we will launch this in the summer in the summer vacation so that uh, people uh, or students uh, mainly target mainly students uh, can uh, because many many mothers ask me ask me for this many mothers who, are, who came to the farm they they wanted to uh, to leave their uh, their kids and their uh, yes to leave their kids uh, during vacation to learn something new in the farm yeah you you mentioned that covid-19 um because of covid-19 we, we we were limited in terms of travel and we wanted to stay outside more how did that impact pay Hazel Farm. Did you have more, more or less people, or how did the outdoor in environment help to um, make it more comfortable for for those who wanted to come to Hazel Farm? Uh, the opening of Hazel Farm was in December 21, so already people were very bored from uh, the COVID and from the restrictions, <laughs> and uh, the outdoor outings uh, were already very appealing and. Uh, I, I believe COVID, um, because of COVID, people wanted uh, outdoor uh, outings, and this continues. Mm. This pattern mm -hmm. continues, and people are always looking for uh, outdoor uh, outings, even after having after COVID uh, disappeared, they still want outdoor activities. Mm. Yeah. So by December 21, it was a good timing, because people were already bored from the last year of uh, restrictions. Wow. So in, in the midst of COVID, you started, you really got going. And so that is, that is a really, uh, that is really daring because there were so many people who were so afraid, but yet you saw the opportunity. One, you're outside. Two, we all need to eat. And then also you were able to create a new business model in terms of, of agritainment, where, where you marry ag agriculture with, with entertainment. This is, I really applaud your effort, but Thanks. I must say that I know it hasn't been easy. And so if there are any things that you can share in terms of um, 
what you would we, you would do differently based upon where you are now what are some of the things that you would think about or share with others if they're thinking about starting a new venture in a time like a covid or some stressful time um i can't think of any uh, because mm -hmm. uh, the plans that I, I made, uh, it was, it, it, it always changed. Mm. Okay. Okay. And when I started the business, I didn't know there is a COVID. When I started, I mean, that <laughs> the journey, it was yeah. in Jan. In Jan, I quit the, the job and I started to look after the farm. And then COVID and the lockdown was in March. Yes. And, and so what I'm hearing you say is that even though you may have a plan, a business plan, a business model canvas, you still need to be flexible because yes. things change, right? Uh, yes, you know, yes. uh, you know. There's an expression that says that 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 even though you may have these plans, that the first the first time that something happens, everything goes out the window, and so and, and so the flexibility that you have, um, and also the per the perseverance that even though these things happen that you have no control over. You control the things that you can control, and so that's something that. Um, it, so, where are you at now within Hay, Hazel Farms? I, I know they're still, they're still, um, you, you're still running a business. Um, and how, how many employees do you have? How, how big? How big is Hazel Farm? Um. The employees of the farm, the, the farm workers are almost six, mm -hmm. six uh, farmers, and uh, they there's like a team of uh, facilitators who work for uh, for facilitated activities and educating them about the farm. They are around five, and there is a team of uh, waiters and uh, the chefs uh, who are responsible for the uh, the kitchen and uh, the food. Uh, and serving the food and the presentation of the food and so on. And these are around um, also six or seven. Um, and for me, my, my core team, they are four. Uh, mm -hmm. It's me, the content creator and the social media expert. Um, and um, the, the agriculture, uh, the consultant who came with me from Tekum. Mm -hmm. And uh the event coordinator she's uh she's the one who is picking bookings and uh, doing the, all the work uh, during the event um and uh, there is an hr consultant who is uh, supporting me to hire the module okay good good well good well th there are a few questions that are online and and so um, i'm going to um yeah. i'm going to to ask some of these questions one one questionnaire asks, what, why did you call it Hazel Farm? Okay. Hazel uh, has a double meaning for me. The color hazel is the greenish brown. And uh, it's the color of the of, of every almost everything there, the, the soil, the branches, the design of that place is all uh, wood. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a color. And also the hazel tree. We don't have a hazel tree, but the hazel tree uh, is a big tree with a big shade, and it always brings people together, and it it, uh, it represents wisdom. So I thought it's a good, uh, it it has a good meaning, and also it has this double meaning. Okay, and and so hey, hey Hazel Farm is is on your family's land, and it's located north um, north west of Cairo, I believe. On, on the way to Alexandria. Been, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, are there any plans to expand, mm, to look at other yes. places ar around around the metro area of, of Cairo? Uh, the, the, the plan is to expand, the, the, to double the, the agricultural land, mm -hmm. to grow more crops and more uh, variety, and also to, uh, to have like a lodge so people can uh, spend the night there, oh. not only day trips. Okay, great. And also, there is a, mm -hmm. there are some plans for animals and for bees, and to produce honey and 
other products. So it could be like a bed and breakfast sort of thing where yes. um, where yes. someone spends the night, spend, spends a weekend. And so, wow. I mean, so you- I hope you so. Know. And I hope it works well with the legal uh, paper. <laughs> okay. And so tell us about that in terms of um, what are some of the, what are some of the obstacles in terms of of the zoning and so you have to make sure mm -hmm. that you have to get the approval of the authorities how, how challenging or is that uh to, to to get the papers it's it's uh, we just have to go through the process mm -hmm. uh with its challenges so a lawyer is uh, taking over all of this and we are already uh yeah, we are already on it but there are some other challenges. So, for example, the the the, the region itself or the area itself mm -hmm. is uh, controlled by um, uh, some people who are not related to the government, and they get to be paid to uh, to safeguard the, the place. So mm -hmm. these people, we always face challenges with them. Okay. Okay. And and so you are a formal business, right? I mean. Yes, yes, we okay. have the commercial registry and yeah, the tax the court and everything. <laughs> because there's there's so many businesses because of just what you outlined. Um, they're informal because sometimes the there are some challenges and, and and so sometimes it's much easier to be formal, but um to to be informal. But with that said, in terms of funding, do you believe that there should be more access to capital, especially when you think of sustainability. Should mm -hmm. should there be loans made available or more support for someone like you who have an idea and who just needs to have the resources to make their dreams come true? Uh, some programs, they already offered uh, like grants, but in um, but to, to, to receive these grants, we have to do some uh, milestones mm. that are all for the benefit of the business so i think this is very nice and it is a great push to the business so for example uh to give a certain amount of money and uh, and in return uh, some assets should be bought uh, and the business should be growing and so on so for this i uh, it's very uh, good for me i would be very happy to uh, for such uh, programs but mm. for loans uh, I would leave it uh, as a last option. Okay. Of course, it's a uh, it, it's a source of uh, finance, but I would leave it to, as a last option. Okay. And and in terms of traditional farming, I know you're you're focused on, on organic. How have you incorporated Egyptian traditional farming into what you do at at Hazel Farm? Egyptian traditional. Uh, Farming or costumes, I mean, farming costumes, I, I guess, that there's someone who's asked, why don't you promote mm -hmm. Egyptian traditional farming costumes on your farm? <laughs> uh, we already had the one event where people came with these costumes. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and it, it was very nice. So we okay. are considering doing this. Okay. Having like oh. a truck for uh, traditional. <laughs> Okay, good. So, so you've done it, and so you may continue. So good, and and so that's something. And so, um, I just want to give you some more time, just to because uh, your story is so fascinating. One, because you took the time to leave your job and to start a farming, and farming is, you know, is so unpredictable with the weather, and but yet you you pivoted along the way that just because you've had a plan didn't mean that that you didn't stop if things didn't work out and so but yet i see you smiling e even though i know you just came from the farm and it's not always farming and it's always it's not always fun right you have to deal with real life issues with insects with um with the environment uh with people <laughs> But uh, but yet, this is your passion, and so where where you are now, do you feel like you made the right the right decision, and and if you could do it all over again, 
are, are there anything that you might change? Uh, yes, I think I made the right decision. <laughs> um, I was always doubting until I started. And with the first event, successful event that I made, and with the first positive feedback uh, that people uh, give me um, on the food or on the farm or on, on the experience itself, uh, with every uh, product uh, that makes it to the end and I can harvest it and I, with the quality that I wanted, mm -hmm. all of these are uh, very satisfying for me. And um, yeah, I know that I don't want to do anything. I just want mm -hmm. to focus on it, to grow mm -hmm. it, to work on it more and more. Mm. And, and so being, entrep being an, an, an entrepreneur, that means that you have many things that you think about. For example, you you saw the the nexus with with agriculture and with entertainment, and so you form ag agritainment. And also now you're thinking about a bed and breakfast. Um, and so, if someone who is watching this, if they're looking for new ideas, what are some of the big ideas that you may not be able to do? right now but what are some of the things that you think that there are some great opportunities right now for those who are willing to leave their job and to follow their passion you mean agriculture agriculture, sector? A agriculture or or anything because you have done you've made a pivot and so there may be some things within agriculture or some things around that have not are big ideas that could be very good for Egypt or for the MENA region? Well, I think uh, the most important uh, thing that any entrepreneur should think of is to, to really try to find what he or she loves. Mm -hmm. Because, and this is not an easy exercise to find what I love is not, for me, it was not easy. Because when you find this, uh, you will have, higher tolerance for any challenges. You will be able to, to, to overcome the challenges because it's something that you are really passionate about. But if it's, if it's something that is an opportunity, but I don't like it, it's not, it's not relevant to my interests, to my character, to what I want, it will not be a good decision. So trying to find something that you love is the most important because the journey is not easy. So if, it, if you don't love it, it, it will be a nightmare. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And in terms of your structure, in terms of your business, you are the founder, are you the sole proprietary of the business or how is it structured? Is it with, with family, with your brothers, with, with other members? Who are the owners? My brother is the landowner. Yeah. But I'm the founder of uh, the project itself, of Hazel Farm. He just mm. gave me the, this part of the land, and I uh, uh, invested on it. Okay, okay, good, good. Like I said, this has been fascinating in terms of, of just giving birth to a dream, because so many of us, um, we sit and we think and, and we say, what if, or if only we could do this, but you've taken the opportunity and you've you've stood up and and, and you've made it happen, and I and and so um, so we got roughly about five minutes left. So I, I just want to give you the rest of the time to just um, you know to just share um, where your vision is for the next ten five to ten years. You talked about a bed and breakfast. Um, to expand, but what is what is next in, in store for Iman? Uh, my vision for Hazel Farm is to be always operating. Now it's uh, it's operating only some days uh, in the week. Uh, of course, this year is more frequent than the last year. Uh, but uh, for me, I want to work every day and to target many uh, groups. It's, uh, it, 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 it's designed to target everyone, not mm -hmm. only for kids, not only for schools, uh, but everyone can enjoy it. Even uh, old people, they, 
we 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 make sure that the place is very friendly for them they can be seated comfortably they they can enjoy the time with their grandchildren for example so uh, i want to make sure that uh, this uh, objective uh, is achieved that it's it's open for everyone so it's, everyone can enjoy it and it's always uh, open uh, throughout uh, the whole year and i want to be um um more sustainable in terms of animal production um to have like uh, more products like honey uh, products from the, the uh, from the produce from the farm produce so more processing um for example we already have uh, a, a space uh, that we grew uh, wheat so we will use this wheat in the bread and the sustir that we serve in the restaurant so I want to be um, a zero uh, waste and everything that we produce, we, we use it again in the farm. And uh, that's it. Great, great. Uh, in, in terms of just working with, um, with the community and with, uh, and, and, with, and with the public, I, I know that you have a website, but it, is there a place where one can order things, whether they're t-shirts or sweatshirts or something with, with Hazel Farms, because, um, you know, they're those that want to support you, that they may be able to make it to Hazel Farms, but they're in the international community that they want to support you and they want to, and they want to get in touch with you and learn from your experience. Is there a place that you have that, that they could tie into? Uh, as a product, we have now tote bags that are replacing the plastic bags, uh, and we have a cap. But we uh, we are planning to have like a shop uh, for t-shirts and uh, like keychains and mugs and uh, farm tools and so on to be like a souvenir shop for uh, for Hazel Farm. Mm -hmm. uh, but if anyone wants to contact, they can contact us uh, through Instagram message, and we are developing a website uh, currently. Okay, great. So, so there's a way that they can contact you, but also if they wanted to schedule a visit or they want to schedule an appointment, you have a website where where there's a calendar where they could um, um, where they could schedule time as well. Now it's uh, on, it's all through Instagram page, okay. but we are developing a website that would be more uh, mm -hmm. more organized in terms of this okay. but now we are very responsive on instagram okay and in terms of ramadan that's coming up um what should we know about hazel farm uh last ramadan we didn't operate but this ramadan we are planning to uh, uh introduce like corporate stores so it's it's going to be a different uh, mood uh, a different mood uh, it will be more of a night uh, shift, uh, a couple of hours before the sunset, and then um, iftar, and then a, a couple of hours after iftar. Uh, so we are installing lighting now to be uh, ready for this, and we're going to send uh, the corporate uh, this proposal, so if they want to organize corporates or groups iftar. Okay, well, great. Well, it seems like we've run out of time. I mean, this has been an exceptional session. I really do appreciate you taking time. Like I said, um, you came from the farm. I I can say that me and my sister, we really appreciated your hospitality. Um, we really enjoyed being on your farm and at your farm and having mm -hmm. food and seeing all the crops and seeing your vision. Thank and you so, so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Yes, and, and I, I look forward to for coming back. <laughs> yes, yes, I look forward to visiting you again and and also seeing the you know seeing the things that you're going to do with your vision. And so, but but I think that the message that I want to make sure that we leave with is 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 your vision, is your your spirit in terms of how that you took a chance and that you followed your passion, and that's something that we can benefit from because so many of us have some ideas, but we're afraid to take chances. And here you became a farmer, but not only that, you expanded the opportunity. So once again, I just want to thank you 
um, for taking the time and um, and wish you much success. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right.